Hi, everybody. Russell, my hammer's 11. Hope you're all safe and well. A little special Christmas treat for you today. Another another former hammer interview just before Christmas. Um, as always, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and the bell icon so you're made aware of any time new content. And we'd like to thank channel sponsor, Suntuck It. Today's guest made, o made over 80 appearances for the club uh, across a four-year period. Of our, he's joining our promotional season 2011-12. It's Mr. Guy Demel. Hi, Guy. How are you? Hi, Russ. I'm fine. And you? How are you doing? I, I'm all right, thank you. I'm not yeah. too bad. It's almost Christmas. It's almost yeah, Christmas. Exactly. It's the what's, best period in, in the year, right? It is. It is. What's what's the Christmas like in the Demel household? Well, uh, right now I'm in Paris because uh, since November I'm working for the TV as a consultant, yeah. so I'm a bit away from the family. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna be all together in a in a week. So yeah, brilliant. Uh, I'm, yeah. So, what about yours? Well, I mean, unfortunately, I don't know if you. Unfortunately, in the UK, um, Boris has decided to put everyone on sort of a lockdown in in London and the South East. So, uh, yeah, like can not mix. I mean, it's, it doesn't really blame I mean, my. To be honest, Guy, my my Christmas started about the beginning of November. I'm one of those really annoying people who who starts Christmas like all the decorations very early. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 always it's always fun. I'm looking forward to it now. Uh, it's a Christmas is just around the corner. Um, and apart from obviously, you know, the obvious stuff, how have you been yourself with all the obviously the coronavirus and everything, the new world we live in? How have you coped? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not it's not easy for for everybody, you know, yeah. like uh, finding ourselves in that situation. Uh, but I think it's all it's also a time to to think about life. But you know our expectation in life, like you know, uh, it's not that easy. Some people uh, live in that situation for years and years. So uh, obviously, we I'm not gonna say pretty lucky because it's not uh, an easy situation. Some people die. Some people can have food. Some people can work. So of course, it's difficult. But I think like uh, being in Europe, be over here, we kind of bless, and uh, it's a hard time that we have to go through all together. And hopefully, it will be, it will be uh, fine, and the yeah. sun will, the sun will rise again. Very good. Yes, very true. Very true. And, uh, and it's one of those things where there's nothing we can do about it. We've just got to just do what the government tells us to do, and. Uh, yeah. And see what happens, but uh, yeah, see what happens. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to to stay home and to be locked up, and you know. But if it's the way to to, I mean, yeah, if it's the way to come out of that situation, then we have to try our best and to respect that. This is the exactly. you know the message exactly. that I can give to the to the people. Yeah, exactly. But 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 West Ham are keeping keeping us interested because we're doing okay at the moment this season. So yeah, I'll take. So we're doing all right at the moment. Tenth, yeah, tenth they're doing Christmas, really good. I'll take that. So yeah, they're good. doing really really good. Yeah, they're doing very very well at the moment. So it, it's uh, yeah. So it's not all bad, you know. <laughs> It's not all bad. <laughs> one, the one time we had fans back in the stadium last Saturday, yeah. we lost against Man United. So you yeah. know. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay keeping behind locked doors if we finish. So maybe so maybe where Sam's gonna keep playing with that fan, do they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we quite possibly the way no, it's going it's at the moment. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> I know. The player need the fans behind them. So yeah, they do. They do. I mean, it's, I mean, it's one of those things. I think you can tell with some of the the teams, and obviously you do obviously the TV and stuff. Um, with the the teams that are lower in the league in, in the Premier League, they're the, they're the teams with clubs the grounds which are very tight, a bit like Upton Park. Well, you know, very small grounds, very tight, so the fans make a big difference. And yeah, um, yeah not so much in the bigger stadiums, I don't think, but uh, definitely in smaller stadiums like West Brom and Burnley. And that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it is it's uh, testing times, but we we'll all get through it eventually, and we'll all we'll all laugh about it, not laugh about it, but we'll all. Look back at it next year when we're all okay and we can all hug one each other hopefully again soon and and see each <laughs> other and stuff like that. But um, anyway, let's give everyone a bit of nostalgia and go back to obviously your time at West Ham. As I said, yeah. um, you know, 
a long time in, in modern day, in modern you know, four four seasons is a long time now in football. Um, and quite a lot happened. You know, obviously we got promoted and stuff, and uh, you know, established ourselves in the Premier League for many seasons. So obviously, you know, you you, you got released by Hamburg in in 2011, and then you joined us in that summer. Why did you join West Ham, Guy? What was you know how how did it become? How did it happen? <laughs> Obviously, uh, West Ham, uh, I think one year before, uh, Avan, Avan Graham was, was the, the manager, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, he gave me a call. I used to, I spoke to him and to Karen Brady. Yeah. At that time, um, yeah, I wanted to finish my career in Hamburg. My idea was, yeah, I played there uh, eight years, you know, uh, mm-hmm. eight seasons. So, I was thinking, like, uh, retiring there. So I told them that I was, of course, um, happy with the with the offer and uh, pleased, but yeah, I wasn't sure about moving. Then in Hamburg, we we changed the the, the president, we changed the manager, everything mm-hmm. changed in the club, and um, yeah, and the interest from West Ham was still there. So at the time, I think it was the last day of the transfer window, and I had uh, Aston Villa and West Ham, so I turned up in England. And then um, I spoke to Sam Allardyce, who convinced me to um, to join to join West Ham. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so whatever club he was going to, you'd be wearing claret and blue anyway. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, to be honest, uh, I was willing to be back in London, and I mean, yeah. I knew I knew uh, the history of of the club. Yeah. Of course, you know. We between fans, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. It was a bit, um, yeah. The difficult part of it was the fact that the club was in championship. Yeah. So you know, um, yeah, I had I had some question, you know, like to know if the if the club's gonna be uh, still um, keeping the, the the top players. You know, mm-hmm. what was the 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 goal of the club? If the club wanted to uh, to get promoted straight away, yeah. if the, you know, so uh, Sam Allardyce give me all the the answer, then uh, I needed to hear at that time, and uh, and then yeah, then that was it. You said the deal, yeah, that was it. <laughs> And that's no, I can totally understand because obviously we were in the championship and yeah, we'd just been relegated and yeah, it, was, it must have been yeah, the club itself. There was lots of stuff going in, a new manager and stuff. And it must have been um, a bit a bit strange to come in. But as you said, you know, we were fortunate enough to keep a lot of our a lot of our players. You know, I mean, you know, when you, you join, unfortunately, you got injured, didn't you? So you didn't sort of make your debut until sort of November that year. So, um, but obviously, we did get promoted and and we did go up. And obviously, you were involved heavily in that sort of running towards the playoff semi-finals and the playoff final um as as a player that the, the sort of the playoffs what is it like as a player because for a fan it's bloody awful but it's, it's amazing if you win but you know for you it must be a lot of pressure thinking you know this particular final itself this is one game that could you know change the fortunes of a club you know 150 million pound game do you think yeah. you like that as a player or is it just another game for you so, Russ, to be honest with you, um, like you said, I had uh, had uh, a difficult time when I arrived to uh, yeah. when I arrived at West Ham because um, I used to get injured, like pull my muscle. I don't know how many times that year. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was unbelievable. I think my mind wasn't wasn't in the right place at that time, yeah. and and I found it really difficult. Uh, I found the championship really, really difficult. It's a sure. tough, tough, tough league. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I, I had the chance to to be fit for the for the playoff games and the final. And honestly, I I, I had the chance to play um, in the Champions League, to play in the World Cup, mm. to play a semi final Europa, Europa League. You know, mm. it's nothing. It's nothing near <laughs> the, the the final. Uh, you know, the final of the playoff is crazy. It was my first time. I mean, I used to watch it on TV. I never was in the stadium, you know, as a fan to to watch a game or something like that during the play, the, the playoffs. So I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really feel it. During the week, I could see the player like uh, Kev Nolan, um, Carlton Cole, you know, like the the, the English boy. They, yeah. they, knew, yeah. they knew like, oh, that is a different game, you know, so they tried to, to pull it through... Um, yeah, the dressing room, like to make sure that everyone is spot on. But mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. until you're on the pitch and you feel it, when you see the crowd, when you see that the, the stadium was full, the the you know the atmosphere and everything. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Honestly, it's it's pretty amazing. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, Wembley as well. The first time West Ham had been back at Wembley for a long time, and uh, yeah, we all turned up that day. It was that was a, it was an amazing day. I remember it because you know, obviously, we've been there before. Where it was, it was a Cardiff, and obviously we went up last time, and obviously we lost the one before we won, we went up. So it was it was always like the playoffs were always a little bit nervy for us, but um, yeah, and obviously winning it and knowing that you're going to be in the Premier League next season must be like, uh, it must be amazing, you know, because it's like, you know, you, usually you have a whole season, you know, you go up, but this is like one game and it's just like so much riding on that game. It's just ridiculous. Honestly, Russ, after that game, I wasn't thinking about the Premier League. Yeah. I was just thinking like, we won that game. Like, it's a final. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we enjoy it. We, we party. We, you know, like, of course, you know, it's, it's normal because we had like uh, such a big, big uh, season behind us. Yeah. But uh, honestly, you know, because uh, if I have to change any something, I will change anything because mm. uh, the way we get promoted, it was the best way to yeah, do it. Yeah. Honestly, through the playoff and to play the final in Wembley was unbelievable. Yeah, I get that. It's like a, it's like as you said, it's almost like a proper tournament. I mean, it's a proper tournament, yeah, but it's yeah. like a tournament, isn't it? And you win, and you, and yeah. it's a massive prize. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember that day. I remember particularly well because my daughter was it was due that day. That was her due date, and I had okay. a, I was and I was obviously at the ground. I was obviously at Wembley, obviously. <laughs> <I don't remember. laughs> But three days later, she came and I had a picture of her in the playoff fight trophy in Romford, uh, West Ham, uh, West Ham shop. But um, oh yeah, it was a, an amazing time. And then, as you said, you know, it was as you said, particularly with the championship, it was, it was a tough league. And then in the Premier League, that's where you really establish yourself in the team. You know, for two seasons, almost, you know, practically an ever present at right back. What was the difference between? You know, was it the fact that, you know, you, you had a good, you didn't, weren't injured particularly and you didn't get injured. So that's why you were in you know, the first choice right back. And was it more suited to your game, the Premier League? Yeah, like I say, the championship is, is tough, honestly. Yeah. Like, um, you know, uh, it's more aggressive, mm. um, you know, very much physical. Even though I'm a physical player, it's much more physical. Like in, in the championship, you play... You play more often, like you have many games um, during the season. So yeah, and it's more a direct football. So it was it was kind of um, yeah, kind of difficult to settle. And also because I was injured, I was I was not I was not in my in my best form, you know. Yeah. So so obviously um, so obviously uh, yeah, like I say, it was difficult. But then in the prem. The Premier was kind of different because uh, you face different opposition. You know, some of the team uh, play more, how can I say, um, less direct football. You know, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, it may sound crazy, but you have more time, yeah. you know, uh, on the ball than in the championship. I mean, this is my my feeling. Uh, and also, like I said, I was, I was fit, you know, I was fit and... Um, and this make a huge difference, of course. Of course, yeah, of course it does. And and you know those those, those two teams particularly, you know, the 20, 12, 13, 13, You know, we did all right, didn't we? We finished, you know, under, under Big Sam, we finished, I think, tenth in the first season. I think next season was like thirteenth. But we had you know semi finals, the League Cup. Obviously, we didn't do very well in that final, but you know, semi finals, League Cup, and stuff like that. What, what was it about that that team? Because obviously, that team was 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 quite a consistent team. You know, what. Why do you think you guys perform so? Obviously, especially sort of going up from the championship as well. Why do you think you guys performed? You know, and finished tenth, reasonably comfortable that season, which is surprising for a new promoted team. Yeah, I think we finished tenth, and if we were maybe more hungry, we could have finished more, because uh, I think we were eighth or seventh in the in the league, like in January or something like that, and we dropped. Mm, we dropped. Uh, some point uh, at the end, but what I want to say, um, yeah, it all starts with the vision of of the chairman of Karen Bradley and Sam, Big mm. Sam, because, like I told you, when I met him, my question, one of the question was, are we capable to get promoted and to be established in the Premier League? Because you know, like I said, when you look at my career, I'm, you know, I spend a lot of time in G in the club where I've been to, and um, yeah. you know, I'm not the kind of players changing clubs every year you know um, mm. 
I like to identify myself to the club and everything. So he told me, no, he told me that, hey, listen, you just have to come and you will see that we're going to get promoted and we will be the prem for the rest of the I'm telling you. And I think the rewards have to be given to uh, to Big Sam because yeah. he knows the Premier League. He knows. I know that most of the time people reward the, the champion. But when uh, when you're capable to do what, he's, what he did, and what he's doing for so many years, like take yeah. a club that uh, is going to be relegated or fighting against the relegation and be able to save the club. I mean, yeah. for me, it's like it's like winning a trophy or to establish mm-hmm. a club. So, uh, and I learned with him, you know, I learned mm-hmm. different stuff. I was, when I came, I think I was 29, you know, I used to have big manager playing top clubs. And uh, I learned things with, with Big Sam, to be honest. So I think uh, he knew how to put the team together. Yeah. Uh, he's a really great um, team managing mm-hmm. man. Yeah, yeah, he know how to manage his play- the players, you know. Um, he know how to put the competition between the players. And of course, um, his idea is to have senior players who, who can deal with difficulty during, during the season, during the game. You know, so yeah, we had we had a good, yeah, good lads, yeah. and like I said, of course, on the on the pitch, the players did the job. But, um, yeah, big rewards ro- on on um, on Big Sam. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He, he's he, yeah, I, I I agree. I don't think he gets as much credit for. No. For, for his time at West Ham because obviously it was there was there yeah. was you know when you were playing you know there was this little friction between the play the play yeah. and the fans and, and, and Sam in terms of the way he played but to be honest in, in previous history in previous recent West Ham history I could do with a couple of boring Sam Allardyce years you know eight to ten that's eight eight to twelve that's sort of what he didn't drop any well than twelve that season and for a newly promoted yeah. club was was fantastic and you're right he brought in some good players and I mean you already had some good players when you came in um you know yeah. people like Green and stuff like that, but obviously bringing in someone like Kevin Nolan um, yeah. as, a, as a man, what was he as a, as a captain? So obviously he's doing a great job in our backroom staff at the moment. What's he like as a, as a club captain, Mr. Nolan? Uh, he was a great captain. Honestly, yeah. I, I will say one of the best captain I ever had um, wow. in my career. Uh, first of all, as a man, um, he was always there for the player. Yeah. He was always there for the player. Uh, if it a player have any problem, Kev will be there to, to yeah. try to help. You know, if he's on the pitch or outside the pitch, uh, during the game, he was scoring goals. You know, this is yeah. <laughs> exactly what you're expecting for, for, for him and uh, from your captain. Like, we knew, like, for example, that, yeah, Kev won't work defensively, but, yeah, he just need one chance and he will score the goal, you know? So, obviously... Yeah, he was doing his job as well as a as a captain. It's, it's important to do to on the pitch to to do your job, you know, uh, to do what you be pay for and what the the, the player is fight, fighting for you. So yeah, Kev is a yeah, he's a great man. He's a, he was a great captain, and I'm I'm really happy that he's in the club now because um, he deserve it, you know. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he deserve it. Definitely, definitely, and, he, and they, they seem to be uh, it, it, the terms of the backroom staff that David Moyes has got now with with Kevin and, and Stuart Pierce and people. Like he's, he seems to have got a really strong backroom staff, and obviously Sam had a strong backroom staff as well. You know, and I think that's 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 key to get that sort of team around team spirit. But uh, you know, in terms of in terms of your time at, at West Ham, you know. How how much did you enjoy your time at West Ham? Did you what was it like being a player? You know, for in that time of being for playing for West Ham. Well, I really enjoy it. I really really enjoy it. Like I say, it's you know I play I play for both at Dortmund and I love my time there. But yeah. it was a different period of my life. I mean, I had I had really great. Five years in Hamburg. The last three was a bit difficult, but Hamburg, you know, is is also in my heart. But the time that I had in our West Ham was kind of different because I was mature. I was, you know, more experienced as a man first before a player. I was more, you know, and I totally enjoy it because uh, first of all, I had like I found some really good friends at the club. You know, with Carlton Cole, Winston Reid, Mojami, you know. 
really, really close friend. Um, and also Papa Bubba Job, you know, passed a uh, few weeks ago. So really, really good friends. And um, yeah, I mean, everything was pretty, pretty, pretty simple with Big Sam. He make, you know, the training, the training session was, they were fun. You know, we had fun. We had fun being in the dressing room. We had fun be traveling together. We had fun playing games. We had even fun when the time was hard. And this is when you, you know, you see that the team spirit is good because most of the club, um, when you go through a hard time, you can see the faces of the players. You know, you can see, you know, if it's a really good bond or not. And we were capable at West Ham to tell us between players the truth, like, man, you don't do enough. It's not good enough, you know, blah, blah, blah. You have to be more focused. You have to do that. that. We, you know, we couldn't even be hard, you know, because, I mean, I can't say the word, but, <laughs> you know, we yeah. could, we, sometimes we could, we could be, I mean, we could have been really hard between us, but then we all knew than it was for the for the good of the club, for the good yeah. of the, the goals, you know. So yeah, I mean, I had a really, really, really uh, loving, loving time in uh, lovely time in um, at West Ham, yeah. Brilliant. And yeah. to be honest, you're looking really well. You could probably still do a job, I think, at right back for West Ham at the moment. You're looking very <laughs> trim, right? very trim. Oh, yeah. it's always so lovely. To, I remember I'm, that's one of my one of my sort of abiding images of you was always when you used to walk in from the players in you know, the car park, or whatever. Always very well turned out. Always, always looked really, really on point. You know, with a nice <laughs> little roll neck on there. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> right, you mentioned a few players. Let, let, let's let's talk about your Hammers Eleven. So obviously, everyone we get on the on the on the on the channel, whether it's a player or, or a fan, gives their Hammers Eleven. So basically, they pick an eleven from the players' perspective or of the players you played with. So obviously, we've had Judy M, we've had, we've had Jack, yeah, people you played with like Jack and, and various others who have given their eleven. Um, so that's what we're going to do now because it's a bit of fun, and everyone likes to hear about who who you like. Now, obviously, it's not you know. It's it's not you know slagging anyone off. It's all just your, your preference. No, no of course, yeah. You but it's hard, you know. It's hard it's to pick hard. only. Ele- Honestly, um, I mean, let me tell you, it's really hard to pick only eleven player with. You know, I spent four years there. I know. I mean, I know. It's just a player that I, I wanted to put, but I know, I know. Don't worry, I know. I have at least here. Eventually, we'll get Mark Noble on here. Could you imagine how hard it's going to be for Mark Noble? You know. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? Right. Uh, let's start. I'm thinking thinking right now, I don't think oh. I'm, I'm the best eleven from Mark Noble. He played with some good player at West Ham. This, this yeah, guy. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> Get, you know, you, and also, obviously, we ask fans about who who they you know their people in their eleven, and your name crops up loads of people because you know one of the because I say for the fans they have to be alive to a scene on play. So obviously, for fans from you know the last 10, 15 years. You're one of the main right backs who played in that time, so you've appeared in quite a few Thank eleven. You. So it's yeah. not you know, you're good. You. And some of the players have picked you as well, I believe. I think <laughs> you picked you. Um, so anyway, so in goal, who's going to be in goal for the Demel eleven? Ah, you see, you see, you see yeah. yeah, yeah. I would put you see in the in the goal. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! What what yeah. made you see so um, such a good keeper for you? Because I played, I played many games with him on the, you know, I played many games with uh, UC on the goalie. Yeah. So of course he's, you know, even though we had, we had uh, some great keepers, but I played so many games with UC on the goal. So I think, uh, and the connection was great, and also the fact that he was really, really calm. You know, his calmness was was unbelievable. Doesn't matter the situation. Doesn't matter how hard it was for us on the pitch or the situation. When you look at Yossi's attitude and everything, you know, he bring you down. So, yeah, yeah I would yeah. I would put Yossi in the goalie. Yeah, he always seemed quite unflappable. Do you know what I mean? He's always goalkeepers. He seemed to be just yeah, oh, calm. Calm, calm, yeah. goalkeeper particularly. Although I didn't like the way he always he never looked tidy. He always had his shirt untucked, didn't he? And it's like. God bless him. And, he, and he, he was quite a skinny man, wasn't he? So his shirt was quite baggy, but anyway, bless him. Right. Okay. We can't we can't criticize him for his dress sense. Right, okay. Let's go, let's go to the defense. Who should we have on the who's gonna be left back for you? Who's gonna be left back? I'm not can I pick also my tactics, right? Can I pick yeah. how I want to play my team to play, right? Well, okay, yeah. so I will play with three centre back. Oh nice. Yeah. Go on, so I will put 
Tonkins on the right, Winston Reed in the middle, and yep. Ginger on the left. Okay, so we've got let's just get him on the screen. So we got we got uh, Winston Reed. There we got Winston Reed. We got uh, James Tompkins, Ginger, and then we got and then we got Jimmy Collins. Then we got Tompkins as well. Let me just get him up. Yeah, so. yeah. That's a that's a strong three. That's a strong. That three. Some, yeah, that is a strong three. Yeah, strong three. You see, very, you see? Oh, <laughs> this is what I mean. You know, that's the thing, yeah, nothing's yeah. Past them. That's going past know. them. And obviously, you know, you, you, you joined. Obviously, you know, when we were coming, when we were, we were obviously been we'd been relegated, and someone like Winston, who had a had a quite a tricky time when he signed, he he and found then, himself in the championship, yeah. and um, and he's coming back soon. I think. I think he's coming back. He, he's yeah. he's loaned. Yeah, yeah so, the, the 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 injury. Take yeah. him out. you know. It's really hard when you have a, a big injury. People have to know that when you have big injuries as a player, I mean, it's like life, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to come back because, first of all, you have to trust your body again. Sure. You have to feel, you know, and, um, yeah. And like I said, West Ham has, are signing good players right now as well, you know, and the competition is higher. So, yeah, you need time and hopefully uh, for him. I really do. I hope that we'll be able to be uh, to be on the team anytime soon for, and play again for West Ham because yeah. he fights, he fought a lot for the club. So it would be nice to see uh, again wearing the jersey. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, he played he played quite a few games at uh, at the White Caps in the MLS. So who yeah. knows? Who knows? It'd be nice to see him back anyway. Right. Okay. So we're playing three at the back. What's the next position then, Guy? What are we doing next? So next. Uh, I will see. I will put uh, four in the midfield. You yeah. know. Oh, okay. So, I like this. Yeah. So left, I will put Aaron Cresswell. Aaron Cresswell. Mm. Oh, Cressy. Yeah, Cressy. You know, good left foot, proper left foot. Yeah, good guy. Um, you know, very professional. Uh, good in the dressing room. And very good on the pitch. Like he's quick. He got good, good skills. He read the game well. So yeah, yeah, we put him. And he's he's playing well now. He's, he's almost like a yeah, renaissance yeah. of his career. You know, he's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah. Right, right. Okay, Chris, he's ne who's next? Who's next? Who's next? I'm loving this so team. Opposite on the right, I will yep. put Stu Downing. Stuart Downing, there's uh, that's, I think that's the first time he's come up, so I've got to type in. Yeah, sure. yeah, people, yeah, people got you know, forget about football. Stuart, people forget, yeah, yeah, people forget quick, you know. He's a guy he can play right or left. Um, he got both, you know, he's both footed, and um, like I say, he's a hard worker, good technique, you know, can cross the ball well, you know, yeah, can score that's goals, you know. And Sam put him at that top of the diamond. Do you remember? He, yeah, he, I remember. That, that yeah, was yeah. fantastic at that top of the diamond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a great shout. Great he shout. Right. Yeah, he got good knowledge of football. He can play different position as well. So, yeah, I would put him there. In the mm -hmm. middle, I would put Mojame and Mark Noble, of course, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Mojame because, you know, like, uh, yeah. His volume, like he can run for 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 ages. His skills, you know, his fighting spirit, at Mark Noble to dictate the game, you know. Yes. Well, I yeah. think with Modi Army, I think he was one of those guys who he really sort of went came into his own. Um, he was one of. He was really good for us, wasn't he? I mean, I just think he was yeah. he was part of I mean you know you self, I mean, you know, he you know, Sam brought in quite a few sort of make sort of big African based players as well, wasn't it? As well. So Odi Army, obviously Papa Booper, God bless his soul, um Abdul Faye, um yeah, you know, exactly. some big guys and, and Mo was I think he was it was a shame he left so early, I think. He would have yeah. been he was he would have been a good player for us, I think. Um he did, he did score a lot, but I don't know if you remember when he scored goals, there was always a big bridge for goal, man. This guy, when he scored, it was like wow. No, no, no. He uh Mojame was unbelievable, really, on the ball. Uh pff, he, his his work rate was amazing. You know, so him alongside Mark Noble, yeah. Club captain, club legend, and also not only for that, for the for the man he is, Mark, and also on the on the, on the pitch, yeah, he can detect the game, you know, he put some hearts, uh, some heart in um, in everything he do, and yeah, for me, he's a he's a he's a great player. I, 
I think it's a shame that he didn't have like uh, much more caps with the free lion. You yeah. know, yeah, you know, yeah. I would have wished for him because you know he deserved it. Being such a level for years and years, I think he would have deserved to be to be called up sometime. But, yeah. yeah. Well, he plays for West Ham. Uh, you, know, yeah. you have to do yeah. extra stuff. You know, Declan Rice is the exception to the rule because Declan Rice is so, yeah. so, so good above, you know, so be unfortunately, Mark, yeah. Right, okay, that's good. Let me put Mo in and let's put Mark Noble in. Right, okay, so what are we playing there? So we're playing, was it three up front? Uh, no, three. I would put one, one as okay. one as a, as, a, as a number 10. Go I then. don't know if uh, I, he didn't play a match for, for, for West Ham, but he was a phenomenal Ravel Morrison. Yes, yes. No, he's a shame that I think we all felt, all all of us, as uh, the club, uh, as a senior player as well, because, yeah. I mean, we everyone tried, yeah, even, like I said, Kevin Nolan, everyone tried to to help him to understand the quality and the skills that he had. This guy had football in his mind. Yeah. It was unbelievable. People can't see what he was doing in training when we play with intensity, aggressivity. Man, the guy could do everything he wanted with the ball. But the thing is, um, yeah, he wasn't professional enough because um, he could have been one of the greatest players for West Ham. Honestly, yeah. And yeah. even now when I see West Ham, the West Ham game, we just signed a really good player, uh, Said mm -hmm. Ben. Um, Ben Rama, really, really good player. I was following him when he was at Brentford. Uh, but Ravel Morrison was that type of player and a bit more because he had this quality pass as well. I mean, he could deliver long ball, short, mm. killer pass, uh, dribbling. He was fast. I mean, yeah, Ravel Morrison, therefore, he was, beyond yeah. the He's yeah. one of those. He's one of those ones. You know, everywhere he's gone, he's he's like been heralded as this. And I thought, I thought we were going to get a complete diamond. And you just said, you know, you got those glimpses. I mean, that Tottenham game, we scored yeah. that goal, and you know, and he was a good player. And he was. But what I liked about him as well, he was. He said he was quick, skillful, but he was strong, yeah. really strong. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a shame because I, you know, as you said, he's so annoying and it's so frustrating. As you said, you yeah, tried. Yeah. To, the stories of you know he just wouldn't pick up his phone and stuff like that at training. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. It wasn't it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy to manage. Uh, Ravel Morrison, Big Sam tried the club. I mean, you know, I think it was it was a it was a really good signing for the club, and uh, you know to try to put it you know on yeah. the good path. But you know, like I said, we all fed, we all tried, but we couldn't we couldn't make it yeah. because because at that time I think he wasn't ready. You know, so it was, it was, it was, it was hard, but he's a, he was a skillful player. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So at the front, yes, at the go. front, I will put, of course, Carlton Cole. It's no party yes. without Carlton Cole. So I will put Carlton Cole at front. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, he scored. It was really important for the playoff game final. You know, against Blackpool, he scored that goal and. Make that assist as well for Vaste. You know, Vaste again, who I wanted to put it, but like I said, you know, it's so many That's players. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so many players. Actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Colton. I mean, he, yeah. he put up a picture on his Instagram the other day of, of one of one of the trips to uh one of the trips to Dublin for Christmas. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> top guy, he's a top man, isn't yeah. he? And he, again, another one who's involved, still involved in the club. So, you know, and I think he always will be, which is which is lovely. I think he's just a, he's one of those players who West Ham, you know, is a cult hero. Do you know what I mean? He's sort of one of these guys who's just always going to be synonymous with West Ham, I think, Colton Cole. Yeah. The fact that, yeah. you know, he came back as well. You know, he did, we re-signed him when we couldn't, we couldn't get another striker in. And, uh, exactly. Top guy. Nice. He got well, West Ham blood. Yeah, so, exactly. uh, his partner, his partner, is, it was hard, you know. Like I got, I, I'm watch, I'm looking my list, you know. I got like four names for the for his partner. I have like, you know, uh, Kevin Nolan. Why not? I have Jaffa uh, Sako, you yeah. know, who who had, I mean, the first season when he came, I would put Jaffa. Yeah, yeah Jaffa Sako. Yeah, the first season, the first season when he came. I mean, it was yeah. 
it was a great player. Yeah, it was it was some some footballers, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you played with some great players, and 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 not just great players, but great men as well. You know, just looking at, you know, there was obviously I, you know, with with Sacco and you know, and and people like that, some really nice, some really big personalities as well. And I think that's what you need in the dressing room, don't you? you need those big yeah. personalities when the chips are down, when the fans are booing Big Sam, uh, <laughs> but you still won. Um, you know, <laughs> you need those big personalities around you, but. Uh, I mean, yeah. You can't play for West Ham without character. You need to have character, like you said. The, the defense, the defense are demanding. You know, the fans are booing, but they really love the team, and they, they, I mean, they travel for the team. They sing, for, they sing for the team all game. They, they, you know, so they want the team to be successful. So, of course, sometimes they, they're not happy and they show it, but. Yeah. The way they show it is also the way they love us. They love the yeah. team, you know, and they love the players. So, because you know, they will fight on the street for the for to defend the honor of the players and all that. So we know we we knew that back then, and I think the player know that today. And but on the pitch, you need player with character because yeah. um, in some clubs you may have some some player when he start to be hard, then they hide. I mean, it's football, you know. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. you. You watch so many games, and you know, and it's easy to to acknowledge when the players uh, start to hide because he doesn't want the ball because I mean the fans are booing or something like that. And then at West Ham, we didn't have that. You know, doesn't yeah. matter how hard it was, all those guys that I mentioned and those that I didn't for the my best eleven, and no one hide. You yeah. know, so we have really uh, good team spirit and the team with character. And I think this is exact. That's why I said big rewards on Big Sam because he knew. The type of character player that you need in his squad to be successful. There. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how he does at West Brom now. You know, with Big Sam's obviously. Be I wish him best. I wish him best luck. Well, and he'll be at the London Stadium. And still stay behind West Ham. Yeah, exactly. A few games time, he's, he's coming to our gap. So yeah, he can play because yeah. you know I'm. You know, hopefully we're, we're we've got no fear of relegation. So I'd like to see him do well because I think he did a good. Yeah. job. But as long as he doesn't. Yeah. Turn up for exactly. our game. Exactly. Still, still, still a bit away, yeah. <laughs> Key, man, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much for your time. Uh, really, really appreciated it. So thank you. Um, and obviously, thank you to everyone for watching uh, or listening, whatever you've done. Give it a like, give it a share. And for myself okay, and for right. Mr. Guy Demel, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Merry Christmas. Come on, you irons, and we'll see you again very... Oh, there we go. It's got a D. There we go. Everyone, 